The California Environmental Protection Agency is concerned about the number of monkeys in the country, which is currently about 5,000, but some locations fear this number could be as high as 10,000. These monkeys originate from Africa. To prevent the increasing number of monkeys, what countermeasures have farmers here applied to control them? Let's find out in the following video. First of all, you need to know about the origin of invasive monkey species. This species originated from ancient apes that lived about 50 million years ago. They evolved from tree-dwelling apes and gradually adapted to life on the ground. Monkey currently has more than 260 species distributed mainly in tropical and subtropical areas of the world. Monkeys are omnivores, they can eat many different types of food. When food sources in the wild are scarce, monkeys can move to urban areas in search of food. They cross steel fences to get into city centers. They cross the wire mesh fence to enter the city in search of food. They roam through city areas, entering residential areas and agricultural areas, causing a series of series of serious problems. The appearance of these monkeys has caused chaos in street traffic. They often appear on the road and cause traffic accidents, making travel difficult and dangerous for road users. Not only do they cause traffic disruption, but they also harm farmers by eating important crops such as radishes and fruits. Although people have tried to drive them away using many different methods, their flexibility and intelligence have made this difficult. In 2019, a strange event happened in Los Angeles when a monkey suddenly appeared on Highway 101. This sudden appearance caused vehicles to stop or quickly avoid it, create long-distance collisions that cause damage to people and property. Because Highway 101 is a major route connecting many cities, monkeys appearing on the road block traffic for hours. Not only does it delay traffic, but it also causes panic among traffic participants. Comment zero if you encounter a herd of monkeys and don't feel scared while driving on the road. The increase in monkey invasions of California cities stems from the locals' habit of feeding them. What may have initially been an act of compassion, providing food for the monkeys created an environment conducive to their growth and made it easier for them to adapt to life in the city. Due to these actions of the city's residents, the government had to step in to prevent this situation with many measures. In particular, dealing with the human action of feeding monkeys. According to Section 14, Title 14, California Code of Regulations, CCR feeding wild animals, including monkeys, is prohibited. If people violate the above law, they will be fined up to $1,000, imprisoned up to six months, and compensated for damages to the authorities. Authorities introduced this punishment to reduce the risk of monkeys causing harm to humans. When watching the video, if you think this treatment is something that should be done, comment number one. To prevent the invasion of monkeys into California cities, the installation of electric fences can be done in locations mainly in high density areas where monkeys often come to hunt, find food, electric fences typically consist of a wire connected to an outside power source via a transformer near the boundary you want to protect. You can add a barbed wire on top, but these options still require a nearby electrical connection, so make sure you have expert knowledge of fence installation. They can last up to 20 years if they are installed properly and inspected annually.
However, there will always be some factors that affect the lifespan of an electric fence such as weather conditions. Additionally, a power outage can cause damage to your electrical equipment. Malfunction, so it's essential to have a backup device in case this happens. Coming to the next method, iron cage traps are an effective method to prevent monkeys from entering agricultural and residential areas. With a sturdy structure and an exit hole at the top, but no exit at the bottom, monkeys are very good climbers but cannot escape. This helps protect plants and minimize damage caused by their corrosion. Iron cage traps also bring economic efficiency by reducing the cost of preventing and treating problems caused by monkeys. According to a report by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife CDFW, the number of monkeys in California has decreased from about 4,000 in 2010 to about 2,000 in 2020 23. After trapping the monkeys, local people will transport them to veterinary centers for sterilization, preventing an explosion in the number of pests in the city. During this process, equipment and tools used in sterilization must also be cleaned to keep them safe. Use medical tools such as skin separation tools and precision machinery to perform sterilization. This process requires great care and technique. Before performing minor surgery, the monkey will be anesthetized and the nurse will clean their whiskers to make the surgery process faster. Using a skin splitter to make a small discovery in the monkey's navel area, then using the precise technique to perform sterilization by removing the fallopian tubes. This surgical procedure is quick with an estimated time of about 10 minutes per case, including preparation and post-operative recovery. The use of precision and advanced medical instruments helps ensure that the sterilization process is performed safely and effectively while minimizing the impact on their health and behavior after the process. Surgery. Once done, the monkey will be returned to the wild or taken to conservation areas for care. However, Californians do not support this action, considering it an inhumane action that hurts animals. In a society where humanity and environmental protection are top priorities, many Californians do not support the use of hunting equipment to take down invasive monkey species. Instead, they prefer to look for solutions that protect the environment and reduce monkey invasion more humanely and sustainably. Approaches such as improving monkeys' natural habitats and increasing public education and awareness about how to live with wild animals are popular. This stance demonstrates respect for the environment and animals and affirms Californians' commitment to a peaceful and sustainable approach to the monkey problem. Do you support California's measures to deal with invasive monkeys? Comment number one shows your agreement. Comment zero if you find the above measures ineffective. Thank you for watching the entire video. Click the subscribe button to the channel and give us a like button to have more motivation to produce the latest content to bring to you. Why is the wild bear population growing so rapidly in the United States? They are present in 50 states. About 10 years ago, Americans went camping in the forest and encountered wild bears. Their numbers are very few and they are very scared when encountering humans. They feed them human food. Quite often, they have made them dependent on human food, making them more irritable and angry. They attack people's cars and steal their food. 
they moved towards the city, looking for food from agricultural farms, attacking cattle farms, and rummaging through trash cans. The U.S. government had to come up with measures to prevent them. To prevent wild animals from accessing livestock farms, there are some simple and effective ways that we need to do. A first solution is that in outer farm areas, there should be a surplus feed regime for maximum production. Instead of providing too much food each day, calculate the amount of food needed for the full price to minimize waste and avoid creating an attraction for wild beers. Minimizing food scraps not only saves resources, but also reduces the number of wild beers in the area. Excess food not only creates opportunities for wild beers, but can also lead to changes in their behavior, as they rely on food sources more easily. By reducing food waste, we can create a safer environment for livestock and prevent wild beers from accessing farms, ensuring that both parties can share the same habitat without causing termites to each other. In addition, using measures to protect animal feed is also an important solution. Solid barns and electric fences can be used to ensure that livestock feed is protected from access by wild beers. This not only protects the feed, but also ensures the safety of your livestock. Fences here will be built around cattle farms and trees. The energy panel system will energize the fence ensuring that there is always electricity for the fence. However, there are some fences that they can still get through. They will try to steal the food, as they are very disappointed. Increased security is another important part of preventing wild beers from entering farm residential areas. Install security cameras to monitor wild beer activity, which can provide valuable information about their presence. So what would you do if you knew a wild beer was nearby? Can you take appropriate security measures? Run as fast as you can and tell people around you about their presence to ensure your safety and everyone else. Please quickly notify the security agency so that they can promptly assist you in handling these situations. Educating people in the farm area about how to avoid wild beers is another important part of this strategy. Awareness of how to respond to wild beers and how to practice safety measures can help create a safer environment for both humans and wild beers in the same area. Just take a quick look at how they handle it to know what you should do if you encounter such a situation. Think about how to handle it yourself and learn skills to protect yourself. In addition to these measures, hunting is also one of the most widely used measures in the U.S. states.
it has become an important part of countermeasures against wild bear attacks. This is a task that not only requires professionalism, but also ensures the safety of people in wildlife. In dealing with wild bears, hunters have an important role in finding and capturing them. They are often people with depth knowledge of bear behavior and ecology, along with advanced hunting skills. Hunters are trained to identify wild bear tracks, monitor their expressions, and predict the bear's potential actions to ensure their safety and the safety of the natural environment. They can place cameras in areas where wild bears often appear to monitor their behavior as well. As well as placing crates of their favorite food so they appear faster. Once the presence of wild bears has been identified in an area, the U.S. hunters often apply careful security measures. Wild bear hunting is a process that requires precision and patience. Hunters use hunting tools and aid safety approach to capture the bears. They will travel in a group so they can properly support each other during the hunting process. The ultimate goal of hunting wild bears isn't to completely eliminate the species, but to ensure that the wild bears and humans can share the same habitat without posing a threat to each other. American farmers dedicate their time and knowledge to carry out this work carefully and mathematically playing a vital role in maintaining the balance between humans and nature and the fight against wild bear attacks. What do you think we should do to prevent this bear attack? Please, leave all your comments down below in the comment section. And for now, let's continue watching this video. In October 2023, the city of Miami, Florida, witnessed a series of crocodile attacks causing more than 100 people to be attacked and 30 to die within a week. This alarming situation raises questions about how American farmers and communities will cope with the influx of alligators and the danger that follows. The alligator crisis forces American farmers to think and come up with creative solutions. Faced with the threat of alligators, American farmers banded together to build formidable steel fences around the city, forming a resilient physical barrier against alligator intrusion. These fences are more than just a deterrent. They represent the city's first line of defense against these reptilian invaders. The construction of these steel fortifications is a testament to the continued determination and resourcefulness of the American farming community. Their innovative approach to using these sturdy fences played a pivotal role in protecting the city, stretching for miles around the city's perimeter 
to establish a formidable boundary that would find it difficult to penetrate. This unified effort saw farmers and local authorities work together to protect the safety of the city, demonstrating the power of community spirit. Farmers plant dense vegetation to create natural barriers, making it difficult for crocodiles to move through the city. This green approach to defense not only adds beauty to the city, but also adds an extra layer of protection. Lush foliage, including tall grasses and native plants, not only enhances the city aesthetics but also acts as a biological deterrent for these reptilian invaders. The dense growth of vegetation further hinders crocodiles' movement, turning the city into an inhospitable environment for them. This innovative combination of aesthetics and safety demonstrates the community's commitment to coexisting with wildlife while ensuring the well-being of its residents. Alligator hunting has been a part of Miami's history for centuries, with indigenous people using simple tools like spears to hunt these reptiles. They use baited hooks and then hunt crocodiles from both the shore and boats. The long tradition of alligator hunting has shaped a culture and customs in Miami over the years. To ensure the sustainability of crocodile populations and safety of both hunters and the public, specific guidelines have been put in place. Crocodile hunters must be licensed, ensuring that only individuals with appropriate training and knowledge participate in the hunt. Crocodile hunting is limited to specific times of the year, preventing overhunting and allowing these reptiles to thrive during the reproductive period. Alligator hunting is limited to designated areas to manage populations and minimize encounters between alligators and the public. These regulations not only protect crocodile populations, but also minimize the risks associated with human encounters with these formidable creatures. In Miami, alligator hunting serves an important purpose. Beyond just being a historical tradition, it plays a vital role in population control, ensuring that crocodile numbers remain manageable while protecting humans and other wildlife from potential threats. The importance of alligator hunting becomes clear when looking at specific statistics related to alligator populations and hunting in Miami. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, there are approximately 1.3 million alligators living in the state of Florida. With such a large crocodile population, careful management is a paramount to protect people and wildlife. In 2022 alone, approximately 2,000 alligators were legally harvested in Miami, contributing to population control efforts. These numbers highlight the important role alligator hunting plays in ensuring the safety of Miami residents and visitors.
Although having the alligators as an essential part of the Florida ecosystem, they can be dangerous to humans and other animals. As a result, regulated hunting helps maintain a delicate balance, preserving both these remarkable reptiles and the prosperity of the Miami community. The history of alligator hunting in Miami is deeply intertwined with the cultural heritage of the area. Today, it serves not only as a tradition but also as a means of responsible population management, ensuring the safety of both residents and crocodiles. By adhering to the regulations and guidelines established by the state of Florida, alligator hunting in Miami continues to be an activity that harmonizes nature conservation and human protection. The increase in alligator attacks in Miami is a stark reminder of the growing challenges posed by environmental changes. As we continue to witness the impacts of climate change and ecosystem shifts, it is important that communities adapt and find innovative solutions to protect the residents. The alligator crisis is a wake-up call for all American cities, urging them to prepare for the unexpected challenges of a changing world. Don't you dare to walk alone in areas where the risk of encountering crocodiles is high. Safety in numbers it is a principle that can save lives in crocodile-infested areas. If you spotted a crocodile, keep a safe distance and immediately. Report to the authorities. Reporting alligator sightings promptly improves rapid and effective response to potential threats. Miami's alligator crisis serves as a reminder of the importance of adapting to a changing world and finding creative solutions to protect communities. By taking protective measures, American farmers successfully defended against alligator invasions, resorting a sense of security to their cities. With the right knowledge and preparation, the United States is better equipped to address future challenges posed by environmental changes and ecosystem shifts. Does the area where you live have crocodiles and what measures have you used to deal with them? Please leave a comment below to let us know. And for now, let's continue watching the rest of the video. The favorable weather conditions have created an ideal environment for the rapid proliferation of mice with abundant rainfall and a warm climate. It is as if Mother Nature herself has given them the green light to thrive. But the mouse also has a bountiful food source as their disposal. The bumper harvest season has left surplus grains and provisions scattered across the countryside, ready to satisfy their unstable appetites. Mice are notorious for their astonishing reproductive capabilities. A single mouse can give birth to four to six litters per year, each containing six to 10 offspring. It is a staggering rate of population growth that only exacerbates the situation.
in response to the mouse infestation, resourceful individuals have devised simple traps to mitigate the damage. These DIY contraptions come at a minimal cost, requiring just $5 to $10 worth of materials. By baiting them with the rodents' favorite food and strategically placing them in high traffic areas, people have managed to outsmart the pesky mouse. They set the traps at night and harvest their catch in the morning. In China, the mouse plague of 2022 resulted in over $1 billion in agricultural losses. This germ reality underscores the urgent need for innovative solutions to address this issue before it further devastates crops and livelihoods. In the United States, mice are known for their elusive behavior, often hiding underground during the day and venturing out at night to forge for food. These small rodents wreaked havoc on over 10,000 acres of crops in the state of California. Once the farmers finished their harvest, they turned to a unique method to combat the mouse infestation. They employed soil plows to unearth the mice from their underground lairs and trained hunting dogs to track down their traces and capture them. This strategy has proven to be one of the most effective methods for mouse control. According to the National Invasive Species Information Center in the USA, approximately 100 million invasive mice are trapped annually. This staggering number encompasses various mouse species, including mice, The president's efforts to manage these pests reflect the determination of American farmers to protect their crops and ensure food safety and security. In Australia, as of 2023, the estimated mouse population in the eastern states has reached into the billions. Various measures have been attempted with limited success. The government has resorted to one of the most extreme solutions to tackle this mouse plague, hunting out in the fields during the night. They swarm in large numbers, prompting farmers to employ specialized hunting tools to combat the infestation. Mastering the art of mouse hunting is no small feat, as these critters are small and incredibly agile. Farmers often rely on shotguns to hunt them down. According to the Australian Department of Agriculture and Water Resources, approximately 5 million feral mice are hunted each year in Australia.
The number of feral mice taken down is determined by the Australian government and state authorities. Taking into account factors such as the population of feral mice, the damage they cause, and the effectiveness of other controlled methods. In 2020, in India, rat destruction of crops reached unprecedented numbers, with more than 200,000 tons of rice destroyed. Notably, in this country, a portion of the caught rats are processed into a special dish, causing the price of grilled rat meat to range from one to two dollars per kilogram. Grilled rat meat has become a unique dish available in many markets and restaurants throughout India. That's incredible. Every year, according to Indian government estimates, about 200,000 tons of rat meat are consumed, equivalent to about 1.5 billion rats. This consumption not only changes the landscape of rat populations, but also has many significant environmental impacts. The numbers clearly show the impact of rat meat consumption in India. In recent years, the number of mice in the wild has decreased by about 30% due to this massive level of rat consumption. Consuming rat meat can be seen as a solution to promote the reduction of the damage that is caused by rats to agriculture creating a number of benefits for society. However, the negative effects and consequences of rat meat consumption needs to be carefully considered to ensure balance between environmental protection and communities' food needs. In some other countries, they go as far as introducing viruses into mice and releasing them back into the wild. This method aims to control their population by allowing the virus to naturally spread and reduce their numbers. What do you think is the most effective approach? Feel free to leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section if you truly enjoyed this crazy incredible video. And for now, Let's dive into the rest of the video. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below, plus don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.